dollars. If you happen to be British or Australian, you even get it tax-free. For professional poker players and amateurs alike, this is the career pinnacle. If you can win the main event, you have guaranteed yourself a place in poker history. Sit down with the best and have a chance at the most prestigious, richest prize in the poker world. Some people in the room have been saving for years to take their one shot. It's near the end of the day. Of the several thousand people who've entered today's starting flight, so many want to play that starting days have to be staggered into flights to accommodate everyone. The dream is expensive, but it's awfully alluring. Many are now out, having gone bust in poker speak. The ones who remain are concentrated on making it through to the second day. You don't want to play the whole day only to find yourself walking out with minutes until the end and nothing to show for it. Everyone is gunning for the magic bag, a clear plastic glorified Ziploc into which those lucky enough to have made the next day of a multi-day tournament can place their chips. You write your name, country of origin, and chip count in excited capitals on the outside before tugging on the dubiously functioning adhesive strip to seal the damn thing up. You then take the requisite photograph for social media with the requisite chip count and add the hashtag WSOP. And then you collapse, exhausted, into some anonymous hotel bed. But we're not yet at the bagging and tagging stage of the day. There are still two more hours to go. Two whole hours. A lot can happen in two hours, which is why one table stands out from the rest. Eight players are sitting as players should, receiving their cards and doing whatever it is that poker players do with them. But one lone chair in the middle of the table, seat six, remains empty. That wouldn't be remarkable in the least under normal circumstances. Empty chairs are what happens when a player busts out and no new player has yet arrived to take their place. Except in this case, there has been no bust out. On the green felt in front of the empty chair sit several neat piles of chips, arranged from highest to lowest denomination, color-coded from left to right. And with each hand dealt, the dealer reaches over to take a precious ante, the forced amount that everyone at the table must pay each hand to see the cards, before depositing two cards that are then unceremoniously placed into the muck, or discard pile, seeing as there's no one there to play them. With each round, the neat piles of chips grow slightly smaller, and still the chair remains empty. What kind of an idiot pays $10,000 to enter the most prestigious poker event in the world and then fails to show up to play? What kind of a dunce do you have to be to let yourself blind down, the term for letting your chips dwindle by not playing any hands, in the middle of the main event. The genius, I regret to say, was your author. While everyone at the table idly speculated about my likely fate, I was huddled in fetal position on the bathroom floor of the Rio Hotel and Casino, and, for lack of a more refined term, barfing my brains out. Could it have been food poisoning from the guacamole I knew I shouldn't have eaten at the Mexican place just down the hallway during dinner break? A bad stress reaction? Delayed onset of stomach flu? Who knows? But my money was on migraine. I had prepped endlessly. I had planned for all the contingencies, including, of course, migraine. I'm a lifelong sufferer, and I wasn't about to leave anything to chance. I'd taken preventive Advil. I'd done yoga in the morning for relaxation. I'd meditated. I'd slept a full nine hours. I'd even eaten over dinner break, even though my nerves were telling me to avoid all sustenance. And still, here it was. That's the thing about life. You can do what you do, but in the end, some things remain stubbornly outside your control. You can't calculate for dumb bad luck. As they say, man plans, God laughs. I could definitely detect a slight cackle. My reasons for getting into poker in the first place were to better understand that line between skill and luck, to learn what I could control and what I couldn't. And here was a strongly worded lesson, if ever there were. You can't bluff chance. Poker didn't care about my reasons for being on the floor. There was no one...